Okay, everybody, this is my spoiler review of From Season 3, Episode 7. I'm going to jump into everything going on with Fatima first, then Elgin, and then we'll go in order of character storylines I found more interesting in this episode, where it was really night and day, where, like, Fatima's story was really good to me, but a lot of the stories suffered here, and I'll explain why. So, with Fatima, Fatima, we just see it's kind of awkward right from the recap of last week's episode it just cuts directly into where we left off like it felt like it was just the middle of the scene which is kind of funny but Fatima tells Christy and Marielle about the cravings Christy says if it was any other situation where they were in a different place she would think this could be the condition where your body thinks you're pregnant but Fatima is still claiming she is pregnant and she's really upset she's upset at Ellis she's upset about people not believing her and when Christy tells Boyd there's two possibilities here that this place has just got to her head or there's something growing inside of her that they can't see. She says, I have no idea how to help her. And Boyd says, then do your effing job and figure it out. So Boyd is just losing it here. They're clearly showing you. We've seen this in previous episodes now and it's amped up even more that Boyd is becoming really broken down by this place. That is what the monsters wanted to do to him in the beginning of this season is break him. And it makes you wonder, did they do this to Christopher? Is Christopher a case where it goes really bad for someone who maybe was trying to originally help people and do good things and was just driven mad and did something terrible? So maybe they're hinting that Boyd is going down that road and hopefully he can resist. Now, Marielle will actually open up to Fatima about what she went through where she didn't with Randall. And she says she's still feels the bugs but reminds herself when that happens it isn't real but Fatima is saying like but this is real for me like it's not out of fear it's not out of being broken and then she gets frustrated with Ellis doubting her and to her point she says she is measuring her belly it is getting bigger and the cravings now are all the time so then she says if the baby isn't real that means it's me so this is something that Obviously, we've been talking about could be the case that something is just happening to Fatima that's really bad, and it leads into the theory that she is the kimono woman that Elgin is seeing, and last episode we saw that woman was it happened to be in the picture of Fatima. So is her body breaking down to that eventual state? Now, Donna will tell Boyd they have to keep a close eye on her mentally. They don't want another situation like Abby, which was his wife, who lost her mind and did some really bad things. So Donna doesn't want that danger in the colony house either. So that's going to be interesting because I don't think that's going to be easy to just throw out Fatima and Ellis where that probably will cause a stir. And that's interesting because where this episode ends up, it was already too late for Donna to have Fatima out of the colony house. Now Ellis will tell Tilly about the ultrasound. She will tell him that death isn't the end. That's what comforted her. And she offers her help always. And Alice is like, well, why do you want to help us so much? You barely know us. She says, I'm old and I have cancer. I like a good love story. So then Tilly being the most suspicious character on the show, is this just a red herring? Is she someone like she says she is just old, has cancer and likes a good love story? Or is there more to Tilly? Why is she always just happen to be there when big moments happen with Fatima? Why is she appearing in Elgin's nightmares? Now, Fatima in bed sees her stomach sucking in, but again, it is probably a hallucination because they don't see that, Ellis and Tilly, when they come up. But she got very skinny in that. So again, really just really hinting towards this kimono woman being Fatima. It's also interesting that Ellis goes to get antipsychotics for Fatima, and Christy stops him and is like, that could make things a lot worse. And they do show a moment there of really zooming in on those pills. So you wonder if that could be a storyline that eventually gets explored about people maybe taking the wrong medicine and then having the opposite effect and not really helping them. That could happen to Fatima eventually. But you see Ellis's character change here in growth where he tells Boyd he saw the worms with him. He saw what happened to his mom. He wants to help Fatima. He doesn't want that to happen to her again. And it probably is a better path for him to believe her what she's starting to do here. But in the meantime, Fatima goes for a nice little snack and starts feeling pain in the greenhouse. And that's where Tilly comes to comfort her and Fatima stabs her. And she says to Fatima, you have to run. So I don't know what exactly that could mean. It could mean that maybe Tilly knows she's going to transform into something else, 
or she knows that there's going to be a punishment for Fatima, whether it's spiritual or it's someone in the town. She just doesn't want her getting in trouble. But I love that Ellis's reaction has no emotion when he comes in seeing someone stabbed in front of him. I thought that was a really <laughs> strange shot of him. But I also think Tilly is going to survive this because we didn't actually see her close her eyes and die. So that's kind of the rule of TV, right? No official shot of them dead usually means they're still alive. And I don't want to see Tilly go out that way. She's made such a mysterious character. You want to learn more about her. So that storyline of Fatima's episode I did like. And then even more interesting and more exciting in the mystery aspect is Elgin. He's the one when he gets on the screen. I'm sure you're like me where you feel like, okay, here we go. We get something moving, get some mystery and answers. It's interesting he tells Tilly he's making a gift for Fatima because she's going through a lot. But it's also after we saw the ghost in the picture of Fatima. So that's interesting in what Elgin's real intentions are there. And it's also interesting that right after he tells Tilly this, the camera shoots out a photo. This is the photo of the seller that Jade saw and Victor hidden as a child. And remember, Jade saw a hallucination of a dead man down there. And now knowing what happened to Dale... This man was probably someone who went through a faraway tree and ended up in that cellar, like Dale. And Elgin finds his skeleton that has to be the man, that body there. There can't just be coincidence. That's just a different person. And that's where the kimono woman shows up to Elgin. And he says, is this really where it happens? I don't know what he is alluding to there. So I'd love to hear your guys' theories on that line. So with Elgin, again, interesting stuff better part of this episode is the Elgin and Fatima stuff. Now, I also like the Jim, Tabitha, Jade story here. So Ethan will tell Jim that Tabitha saw this place when she was younger, just like Victor's mom, Miranda. And they sneak in in an interesting scene like this, a great Jade hysterical moment where Jade says to Ethan, be careful where you're stepping. And Ethan goes, why? And then Jade says, bear traps, seriously. The delivery was great here, and that actor is just killing it this season. But Tabitha and Jim are having the same argument that Fatima and Ellis were having this episode of, like, you think I'm making this up, someone not believing them, which did feel a little too similar because we just saw a scene like this with two different characters. But Jim will say to Tabitha that there's other crazy things that have happened here, and he just thinks this is another case of that. But she makes a great point that those things happened here while they were here. Her having these nightmares was before they got to Fromville. So then Tabitha does a walkthrough of the rocks, and she recounts she would hide behind the rocks in these nightmares, and whatever was making everyone scream was on the other side of the rocks. So Jade brings up how Miranda says she was chosen, so she was someone who saw these visions, so Tabitha could be destined for this place like Miranda believed she was, so that Tabitha would be the new chosen one. And it's fascinating with Tabitha because I'd mentioned this before that she really is one of the most important characters and her having this weird connection to Miranda and similar things in their relationship like you see in the car when she talks about with Henry, how they had a similar bracelet, similar song. So it really makes you wonder what is that ultimate connection between Tabitha and Miranda? Is she like a reincarnated version of Miranda? Who really knows? There's something up there though. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Now let's go to the three storylines I didn't like this episode. I thought were very, very weak and some playing out bad. Let's go to Victor and Henry first. So Victor just has Jasper in this rocking chair. Now he's trying to get him to talk. And I love Henry is just like, Victor, it's a doll, you know? So Henry is just not getting a great experience with his son at the moment. So Victor will take the doll to Sarah's and bring the doll to her basement. That's where it was really rocking the Victor storyline with Sarah. It's a good pairing, and I'm glad they just go back to that. Because I was worried about how long can you make an interesting with him and his father together. Like, it's sentimental, it's nice at first, but then it's like, okay, it can get kind of boring. So I like the Sarah and Victor pairing and hopefully they get a better scene out of Jasper because you're waiting for the Jasper answer. What's going to happen with that? Now Henry's just looking at Jade's notes on the wall at the bar, which was interesting. And there's people who have theories that Henry could be bad. So maybe he's seeing that someone's catching on or he's actually very interested in what Jade's doing. But Henry tells Donna that he had thoughts he feels guilty for it was easier when I thought he was dead as a thought he had. And he says, what kind of father thinks that about his child? But he already had a very similar line and exact scene to this to Donna, talking about how he feels bad about thoughts he has, thinking of things about his kids. So this just felt at 
a episode that was very poorly paced one of those scenes that was just like oh my god like come on like this isn't really getting us anywhere learning new information and on that point go to another storyline that suffered for me which was randall and julie because it has that very walking dead feel where you have these scenes that are just completely taking up time and they go for a walk and they're starting to bond and julie Never has gotten to drive before. So they have a sweet moment where Randall teaches her to drive. And then Randall sees the bugs in front of Julie. She doesn't see them. Randall, for some reason, when he runs away from Julie, doesn't run straight down the road. He runs into the woods. And they see and feel something outside that looks like the remains of the cellar. They probably were visioning when they were possessed when they were tied up so there's that but is it that interesting no does it really get us really anywhere no and it just kept dragging on and then it goes even further down where Acosta's storyline to me was horrendous this episode first we see a scene where we see another character in the show ranting about the new situation they're in they're frustrated with everyone just sitting around they have all these questions and Kenny has to calm her down and tell her that Every question you've asked has been asked before. Every theory you had, someone had before. At some point, you either adapt or you lose your mind. But this scene, I will say, and people overuse this, but it is total filler. Like, we have seen scenes like this before. We can already assume that Acosta would have this type of conversation. We don't need to see it at this point. And her learning about the talisman, again, didn't need to see. The only thing we really learned was Acosta didn't have family back home. But it's a throwaway line. We don't learn anything else. Oh, and then Bakta comes in and tells Kenny she wants to reopen the diner. Can't wait for that. And then, in arguably the worst scene of this show to me to date, Acosta goes to Boyd's station and wants her gun back from Boyd. They fight again, and he gives her the gun eventually without the ammo. It is one of the worst scenes to date for me in the show. I thought it was insanely cringe and just kept going and was just way over the top and her saying give me my gun back in his face it was just really bad I did not like it so I, I've really been disappointed in the last three episodes of this show and I hope it gets back on the run it had the first five episodes so this to me was a low point for this season and it's scaring me how fast it's dropping but I hope it just picks back up and gets the pace better again and I really want to like it more but I'm just got to be honest here so for this one i'm giving it a 6.3 i think it's one of the worst episodes ever of the show but it still had its good moments and like i said i think half the storylines here were, were pretty good not amazing there wasn't anything here amazing and i think that the other three storylines really really suffered and that acosta storyline was really brutal brutal so let me know you thought of it down below though i'd love to hear your thoughts i love your theories as well i read every comment try to respond as many as i can hit that sub button so you're gonna miss one of my reviews of from i'm also gonna be reviewing silo season two and the new dune show and i'll see you next time